Episode number 51, How to Be Self-Critical in a Positive Way. Hello again and welcome to another episode of Road Noise Life, one mile at a time. I'm your host, Michael Blackston. You're sitting alongside me in the passenger seat as we drive all over the southeast for my commute for work on my way home again from Sumter, South Carolina, which was earlier today in Conway, South Carolina. In the past two or three episodes, you've heard me talk about Conway a lot. Well, it's the same couple of trips, and I did episode 50 on the way to Conway, and this morning I drove from Conway to Sumter, did a little job, and now I'm on my way home. Finally got everything wrapped up, and I am so excited about that because I love my job, but these jobs were very hard, and in in fact, last night, or or yesterday, I started at 8 o'clock in the morning and finished at 9 o'clock at night. It was not easy. I etched the entire time. But we're done. We're on the way home. Everything turned out great. And I'm excited about this episode because I, I think it's needed. I think it's needed not only for me and other artist types like myself, but I think it is needed for everybody because I think most people tend to be way too self-critical. And although there is a, a good time to be critical of yourself, Every time I think there's there's always some ways we can kind of self-critique to make ourselves better. But I think too many times we as human beings are way too hard on ourselves. And even when there needs to be work done and there need to be things that are paid attention to about the things that we're being critical about, we go about it the wrong way and we beat ourselves up. And that's damaging. It's not helpful. I'm one of the world's worst at that. I'm my own worst critic. And I talked about that in the seven interesting thing of things about artists, about how uh, not necessarily self-critical we are, but which we are. I, and I did mention that, but I, I talked about one of the interesting things is that most or all of the artists I know are very insecure. And I think being overly self-critical comes out of that insecurity. So I want to touch on that a little bit deeper, and I want to build this around the concept that this is for everybody, not just for artists. I think we're way too hard on ourselves when it's time to criticize ourselves. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you five things that I think that we need to pay attention to and have in the back of our heads when it comes to being self-critical so that we can learn how to be self-critical, but in a positive way. So the first thing you need to do is you need to be logical when you're reviewing a thing that you're trying to criticize about yourself or trying to fix. You need to be logical. You need to take into consideration the truth about the matter, not just what your emotions are telling you, but the actual logic truth. Number two, we need to be willing to correct ourselves. You need to be willing to say, I was wrong about this. Maybe I need to make some changes here. Because I think a lot of times, we love the things we do even if we know they're wrong. Sometimes we love them enough that we get mad at ourselves when we hear them not go the right way. I think we need to be open to the fact that there can be a mistake in anything that we do and we need to be willing to make corrections when corrections are due. Number three, we need to be forgiving of ourselves. I think too many times we get mad at ourselves and just refuse to forgive ourselves for saying something stupid and that's already out there. I know that there are things in episodes that I've released on this podcast that I really would like to go back and change, but I decided because I'm going to be authentic with you that I'm not going to go back and change them. I'm just going to let them ride because I'm human. And instead of just changing them and going to all the trouble of taking them out, if you're going to learn to live life one mile at a time with me, then you're going to learn the lessons along with me. Uh, number four, be constructive, not destructive. Let me say that again. Be constructive, not destructive. And number five, I think we need to think like our audience. And I'm not just talking about speakers or artists or stuff like that. Everything you do, whether you're an artist or not, you have an audience. You're doing it for, unless you're just doing it for yourself, you're doing it to please someone, whether it's your boss, whether it's a parent, a family member, a friend, or an audience your customer. Everybody in some shape or form has an audience that they are delivering their skill, their goods, their services to. And I think we need to think like that customer or like that audience instead of 
kind of digging into where we want it to be because in those dark recesses is held perfection. And the truth is, nothing's perfect, nobody's perfect, and you can never live up to that. So I think we need to live or to think like our audience. So those are the five things that I think we need to keep in the back of our minds as we start to be self-critical in order to be constructive about it. Now what I've decided to do is I said, okay, if I'm going to go through this and I'm going to talk about what I think needs to happen in our thought process as we're trying to be self-critical and find a positive way to do it so that we can grow and learn and progress from mistakes that we've made or maybe even realize that what we thought once were mistakes really weren't. How am I going to go about doing that? And I think really giving you an example is, is really the best way to do it. So I listened back to the very last episode that I released, which was episode number 50 on milestones. And I listened to it as a... in, in, in two ways. I listened to it from me, how the perfectionist artist would hear it, critiquing myself in that very destructive, overly critical way, and then I listened to my, and I wrote down notes, and then I listened to it again, and I tried to put myself in the place of an audience or somebody who was trying to help me to progress, who was trying to give me an education, give me instruction, and be constructive, and I looked at the two, I made notes to that, and I compared them, and that's what I'm going to do for you right now. I'm going to talk about I, I listed five critiques that I had when I listened to that entire hour-long episode twice with two different mindsets. So let's get started. The first one, right off the bat, is the first thing that I and most people who have any speaking assignment or engagement will, will all tell you, I hate my voice. I, I hear it all the time, constantly, and somebody like me who uh, is involved with theater and public speaking and I do this podcast, I'm constantly talking to people who will give me feedback in the area of, I could never do that. And one of the top reasons is because they hate their voice. They've heard their voice in a recording or on a video somehow, and they say, I just hate the way I sound. So that was the negative me, the first thing that hit when I was listening to that just as me was, I really can't stand my voice. I do not like my southern accent at all. It's not that I don't like the southern accent, I love the southern accent, but my southern accent I think makes me sound like an idiot. It, I'll tell you where my mind goes when I self-critique myself in the harsh way about my speaking, is that I sound like a dumb southern guy trying to sound intelligent and not making the cut. Truly, that's where my heart goes with that. But it's not the truth. When I was listening to it, as someone who is being constructive, my only thought is what I know about this entire situation. Being a veteran of radio and the stage and hearing myself on recordings and stuff all the time, I've had to learn this lesson the hard way and I know it. The logical thing is, nobody likes their voice. Think about the person in your life that you just love their voice, or maybe it's a radio announcer or somebody that you just, oh, you could listen to them talk all day long. I'll guarantee you at some point in their life, maybe every day, probably every time they listen to a recording of themselves, they say, I hate my voice. There's a logical reason for that. And the logical reason is when you hear yourself speak in your head, you've got sound waves reverberating all throughout your head. Your head is like a drum and, and, and you're hearing things bouncing around and echoing inside of your head and your ears as, as, it, as it goes around. Because think about it, the, the vibrations and the intonality is happening physically, vibrating inside of your head, but it's also the sound waves are coming out of your mouth and being re-picked up again by your ears, and so it's circling around. What happens is it's different when someone else is listening to you. They only get what comes out of your mouth 
and goes into their ears. They don't get all of the original vibrations that are going on when your voice is talking. I know this. Intellectually, I know this. And I know, and you may say, well, that's even worse because what I'm hearing, the real thing, sounds awful. What I'm telling you is, in this particular situation, the only reason you don't like it and the only reason it sounds awful to you is just because it sounds different. It's weird. It's like looking at a picture of yourself and it looking different from what's in the mirror. You see yourself in the mirror every day, but what you don't realize is you're not actually seeing an accurate representation of yourself. You're seeing a switched perspective mirror image. That's what you get to see until someone takes an actual photograph of you or video and sticks it up there and you see what everybody else sees. You're not ugly. Your voice is not bad. It's just so weird to you and you're not used to seeing yourself or hearing yourself in that way. So it just seems odd and out of place. And that's why most people hate their voice. That long explanation is to explain that there is logic behind it that I already know. So when this particular situation with me critiquing myself and my very first attitude being, I hate my voice, I know better than that. But as I listen to it as an objective observer, someone who is just there to critique in an intelligent and helpful way, reminds me that it's logical that I wouldn't like my voice, and so I need to throw that out. That's not an issue I need to worry about. It's not something that needs to be corrected. It's not a mistake. It's me, and I don't need to go changing anything because if I go changing something, then I'm acting a part and I'm not being me. And that's great if I'm doing a podcast where I'm playing a different role. If I'm doing a, a, a radio story or something like that. But it's not. This is me. This is supposed to be me being authentic. So that's number one. So the second thing I noted was my audio quality in that episode I thought was awful. I thought it sounded amateurish. I thought it sounded really bad mainly because of my heavy plosives the B sounds and the P sounds and the F's and the T's that have a have a gush of breath behind them let me give you an example and I'm gonna try to do this now even though I think I've corrected it if I go P or P I don't know if it's picking up or not because I figured out where to place this microphone so it doesn't pick up the plosives and that's wonderful for me but in that episode, the critique for me was, it just sounds awful. Nobody's going to want to listen to that because they're going to listen and they're going to say, this guy has no clue what he's doing. That was from the overly self-critical, harsh about me, me, that was listening. So I wrote that down, and that's exactly what it says. Audio quality is awful. Okay, so the other me listened to it the objective me and here's what I thought and I and, and I'll read exactly what well I'm, I'm gonna read it it's, it's just short I want to talk about this here in just a second I'm gonna kind of stop what I'm doing because I do have an apology to make and I didn't write it in my notes but now that it's on my mind I want to actually make that apology so but what I wrote here during this point is that the blessing of a new mic comes with a learning curve that's the truth of the matter. What I didn't write down is that the audience probably doesn't care or even notice that much. I notice things about audio quality with different podcasters and stuff like that because I'm an audiophile. I'm used to having radio technology and stuff like that, and I know what good sound sounds like. And when I'm not able to achieve that, it bothers the heck out of me. So when I hear it from myself, it really bothers me. But the truth of the matter is, most people don't pay that that much of attention. Most people who are not public speakers and not people who have any idea of how to, wouldn't know how to turn up the volume or down the volume on a soundboard, wouldn't know what to do, they don't, they really don't care. Can they understand what I'm saying? Is it pleasant enough to their ears? Is it not too loud? Is it not too soft? Are they able to understand and articulate every word I say? And that's the truth of the matter. But the truth that I wrote down is that this new microphone that I'm using is a blessing. And with the blessing of this new microphone, 
by design of the way the microphone is. It's not a handheld microphone. It's a boom microphone. It's got a little arm that sticks out in front of my mouth. I'm going to have to find the right kind of combination of distance and angle of the microphone for it to pick up my voice nice and crisp and clear, but not pick up those hard B, V, P, T, F, and uh, F sounds that are called plosives, which bother me so much and make something sound a little less professional. I give you an example of this, and it's neat because it's another good piece of feedback. One of the group members, one of the artists from the My Everything Arts group I have on Facebook, I posted uh, episode 49, the seven interesting things about artists. I posted that episode on Facebook, on the group, and this member named Erin listened to it and she gave me some feedback there on Facebook and she was telling me that she first of all liked the content she agreed with all of the points that I made about the artists but she then mentioned that she loved the sound of the microphone she thought it was crisp and clean and sounded professional she thought it sounded great and she was giving me that feedback because it was the first time I had used this new microphone well I wrote her back saying, you know, thank you, I'm glad you like it, and that overall I like it. I've got some, I mentioned the plosives and things like that, and I said, I've got some things I've got to work out, but overall I like it. It didn't bother her one bit. The things that I were, was picking apart about the audio quality of this microphone didn't bother her one bit, but I was being destructive. I was being that insecure artist that says, well, okay, I guess it's okay, but here's what I'm going to do to make it better for you. I promise, please don't stop listening. Get rid of the insecurity. Be honest. Be true and, and constructive with your criticism of yourself. So the third, oh, let me go, let me go back. I, I got an apology to make too. I'm going to cut in right here in the middle of this and make an apology because in the last episode, episode number 50 on Milestones, I read a piece of feedback from my good friend Jack, uh, Zach Gerald that he had left on iTunes. And the reason that I'm telling you that I, I need to make an apology is because I did something very dangerous. You know, a lot of people may not have liked the idea of me walking, or not walking, uh, driving around doing a podcast with my hand, one hand driving and the other holding a microphone. And I, I get that some people may have considered that dangerous. And it's one of the reasons I went ahead and got this handheld setup, uh, or excuse me, hands-free setup. But then what I did last week was even worse because I read that feedback I noticed when I was listening to it, and it didn't even dawn on me when I was doing it, it was the equivalent of texting and driving, because I realized I did not pull over to read you that content, that feedback. When I'm giving you these bullet points, yes, I had this thing down in my lap, and I glanced down and glanced right back up. I mean, there's half a second between my eyes leaving the road to my lap back up. But I read that whole thing which meant my eyes were off the road at that time and I'm going to own it if I do something stupid like that and I want to use this as an opportunity to give a little bit of a public service announcement and say don't do that I really I, I wish I could go back and change that I hadn't done that and I didn't cause any wrecks didn't cause any problems but just the fact that I know that somebody's going to listen to that and say <laughs> I still hear the road under his tires and he's reading that. So unless somebody's driving for him, that means his eyes are off the road this entire time he's reading that feedback. That's not good, it's not smart, and it's extremely dangerous, and the reason I'm apologizing is because I put myself and other people at risk by doing that, and I wanna make sure, if I'm gonna be authentic with you in other things, I'm also going to own it when I make a grave mistake like that. So praise God nothing happened and I didn't have a wreck, but I want to promise you that if anything like that ever happens, I'm not thinking about it. Uh, it's not something I'm trying to do on purpose. I don't text and drive, but I, if I'm going to do this while I'm driving, I want to be the utmost in the poster board for safety. So that being said, that's all I'm going to say about that. Let's get back to number three. The third thing I, meant, I noticed was that I ramble a lot about stuff that I consider uh, 
I consider irrelevant, really, when I think about it. Stuff I think is important and I enjoy talking about, but maybe irrelevant to the podcast. And so I put in there, I need to shut up and just shut up about irrelevant stuff. Shut up about irrelevant stuff. There's a little drop of truth in that, in that I do tend to go off on rabbit trails from time to time. Well, quite often. And sometimes it's not necessarily relevant. I'll, I'll be talking about something and I'll interrupt myself to give a little tidbit of information about it that isn't really that interesting. It's just something that it's like something to say. Okay, so I gave myself that harsh critique. Just shut up about irrelevant stuff. And I got this look on my face when I'm saying it and, and I'm hoping pretty soon I can get something that has enough data storage in it where I can uh, video record these as I go. I've got a dash cam thing happening and I'm getting ready to hopefully be able to record these and put these episodes live and then uh, I, I want to live stream them as I'm recording the audio too while I'm driving but I'd also like to put them on YouTube. And uh, it, well, here we go, there we go, right there. I just did it. I was talking about being irrelevant, making this point, and then I interrupted myself to talk about something that's really kind of irrelevant to what the point is. Y you see what I'm saying? And I didn't do that on purpose. That was just a, <laughs> a coincidence. It, I did it right then. Okay, so the harsh criticism was shut up about it. Don't talk about irrelevant stuff. So when I listened to it objectively and tried to give myself some constructive criticism, I just put stay on topic and avoid too many rabbit trails. How is that different from the five points or any of the five points that I talked about we need to keep in mind when we're doing self-criticism? Well, I think that falls under the be constructive, not destructive. It is an issue that as a, a host, I probably need to pay a little bit more attention to. Yes, it's a Life Journal podcast, so there are going to be nitpicky things about my life and little small details that I'll hope to give you that you might be interested in. But you might not be interested in all of them, and I need to be willing to, that's another one, be willing to correct. I need to be willing to correct that, but in doing so, I need to be constructive not destructive. And I think that's what the objective me who listened to it accomplished with that critique. Instead of just saying shut up about being irrelevant or shut up with irrelevant stuff, I just said try to stay on topic and avoid too many rabbit trails. It was instructive. It was constructive. It gave I gave myself some education and I gave myself some some advice. That's the word I'm looking for. I gave myself some good quality, positive advice. It didn't hurt anything. It didn't tear me down. It didn't insult me. Shut up. You know, stuff like that. It didn't insult me. It was just, okay, here's a problem. It's true. It happened. It's over. I forgive myself. I'm willing to correct it. So how do I correct it? Let's figure out a constructive way to do it. Try to avoid rabbit trails. Okay try to stay on topic. Okay. And I'll try to remember that next time. I know that one way to do that is to make bullet points and to go ahead and get my show notes written out ahead of time, not just do the podcast off the cuff and then write the show notes after I listen to it in post-production so I can make sure I've got show notes. I can go ahead and write the show notes first and do the podcast based on the bullet parts points from that. And that's constructive, and that's helpful, and it helps me to become a better show host. At least I hope it does. All right, the number four. I realize that I can go on and on and on about a topic. Even if I'm staying on a topic and I'm not going off on a rabbit trail, I can kind of say the same thing over and over and over again. So I told myself when I was being the insecure person, too long-winded. Three words. Too long-winded. Just blunt. You're too long-winded, Michael. The objective me says short and sweet is good, but don't sacrifice an interesting story. 
that's something I know from my radio days. If you've got an interesting story to tell, people want to hear it. People will listen. That's why those of you who have subscribed to this podcast listen to it on a weekly basis. That's why you keep downloading the episodes and listening to them. Because something about it interests you. So don't just assume that because you're long-winded, you're being long-winded for the sake of talking. Or I shouldn't. But I do need to keep in mind that short and sweet is good. There are times when I need to get the point off, move on. But at the same time, I don't need to crucify myself just because I can make a short story long. If it's interesting and I've got an interesting viewpoint, I can go ahead and tell it. And the last one is number five. My first critique was too whiny about feedback. And this is something that's been on the back of my mind for a a while. I mention it all the time, but I do have to ask you for feedback. It's part of doing this show. And it's always part of the end process right as we're leaving out and the music's playing under there. I'm giving you all the ways to get in touch with me and stuff like that. But I also mention a lot that I don't get enough feedback and you guys don't talk to me. And I realize that sounds whiny. And the kind of insulting me says, you're too whiny about the feedback. Again, blunt, just rude. Too whiny about the feedback. I understand that sometimes we need to just be blunt and get to the point in our own critiques. But honestly, that's not real constructive, is it? It doesn't help me to just tell myself that over and over again. I already know it. I've been going over it in my head over and over again. How are some Uh, ways to not sound so whiny. So instead of just saying, well, here we go again, too whiny about feedback, stop and think. Think, maybe think like my audience. What would my audience like to hear as far as feedback goes and when it comes down to it? And I got to thinking maybe when I listen to it constructively, maybe a pre-recorded call to action is in store for this podcast. I haven't recorded it yet. I don't know that I'm going to. But maybe something that's pre-recorded when we get to that point, something that says the same thing in every episode. I would never try to pre-record something and just play it like a robot as far as the content goes. But when it's stuff like at the very beginning, intros and uh, outros, things that you say the same exact thing over and over again in every episode, maybe it would help me not to whine about it so much if I just had a pre-recorded call to action for feedback and ratings and reviews and all that stuff because it's usually in that area when I start getting whiny about it. So I gave myself that constructive advice and I think I might take it on down the road. I'm really busy right now so I don't know when I'll be able to fit in the time to do it. I'm thinking about getting on Fiverr or something and maybe getting one of their announcers to record it for me. but. It's something I'm going to seriously think about doing. And instead of just saying, you're too whiny, that didn't help me. But when I thought about it constructively, I said, here's a solution. Instead of just fussing at yourself, here's a solution. So those, those are some examples just after listening to last week's episode that I came up with. I mean, I could listen to it again and I could really nitpick it apart. But those are just five things that stood out to me right from the start as I was listening to it going down the road first as the type of person I usually am being too self-critical in a negative way and then trying to be a constructive critical person in a positive way as I was going down the road and listening to it again so I hope you took something out of that let me give you again those five points that I think we always need to keep in mind whether you're selling carpet or delivering content for a podcast or doing a YouTube video, whatever you're doing and you're looking at your, if you're reviewing yourself, here are five things you need to keep in mind. You need to be logical, you need to be willing to correct yourself, you need to be forgiving for mistakes that happen. Don't worry about that they did happen, they did, get past it, move on and fix it. Be constructive, not destructive. It doesn't help anything to tear yourself down, but it helps a whole lot to go ahead and be constructive and build yourself up and make yourself better for the next time. It's like climbing a ladder one rung at a time. 
doesn't do you any good to climb a ladder to go back down to the bottom every time you climb a rung go back down a rung or two because you don't feel like you climbed it well enough even if your foot slips keep climbing that ladder and then finally think like your audience try to put yourself in your audience's place and see if maybe there's something that uh, you can figure out from that perspective to help you to progress in whatever it is you're reviewing yourself about. So I hope that was constructive and I hope it was something you could learn from in episode 51. I'm going to be interested when I start post-production in a little bit and I just kind of listen to the raw recording back on this. I'm really interested uh, how my plosives sounded on this. I'm thinking I got them right and ooh, I hope I did. I really hope I did because that's in the back of my mind. But I know that there are things I can do. So if I don't exactly have it right just perfect the way I like it yet that's okay we'll get them next time not a whole lot to reveal to you about my week this week other than just it's been working 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 yesterday I got there at 8 started working setting up my tent I had to put a it, it's been rainy in Conway South Carolina all week long it just there was a tropical depression or tropical storm or something off of the coast actually last week and it kind of settled in and they were still getting some uh, some sort of repercussions from that I think and it just constant heavy rain and storms in fact I was only supposed to be there Monday through Wednesday or actually Monday and Tuesday but because I was forced to stop working at half at the half day point on Monday because of rain uh, and I had to figure out a solution to not get wet for the rest of the week because it was supposed to continue to be rainy I had to move everything up by a day and I had to stay an extra day which I didn't enjoy doing but you know that's part of being your own boss sometimes things happen and you have to make arrangements make adjustments and just kind of do things on the fly I have a pop-up tent that I use for hot days and sunny days when I have to work outside and when I'm working in Conway I do work outside so I need something to shield me from the sun well, this time I needed something to shield me from the rain. I put up that pop-up tent, but after it rains for a while, the fabric of that pop-up tent gets soaked because it's made for shade, not for rain. And it starts leaking through onto the surface and onto everything I've got. So I had to move everything in. And then the next day it had dried out enough in the morning that I, before more rain was coming in, that I was able to take a tarp and secure it to the top of the tent and give myself an extra rainproof layer and that seemed to do the trick but it put me back and the job that I was doing was so detailed and so intense that it took me finishing it till 8 or 8 30 last night and then I still had still had four black granite vases that I had to well no not really four there were two vases but there were four etchings there was two etchings on each vase uh, each vase had an etching on each side of it and I had already done one so I had three etchings left to do after I finished the big job yesterday and I ended up going into the monument company and uh, going getting something to eat last night when I finished the big job and I got back around nine o'clock and then I finished the total etching the vases and everything at about 11:30. so I just laid down on their couch and woke up at 5 45 this morning and drove to Sumter that's been that's been my week it's just been consumed with etching and doing my business and it's a blessing because I'm swamped I have been through the situation where I was twiddling my fingers and calling people saying do you have any work for me and at this point for the last couple of years I haven't had that issue I've had a couple of slowdowns but other than that uh, that's all they were was slowdowns to where I could take a breather just between the two or just between the situations where I could barely breathe for so much work and that's where I am right now I'm just barely able to breathe there's so much work and so much I'm having to do to juggle that uh, it's a blessing but at the same time it will wear you absolutely slap out there's a southernism for you slap out and today's positive review you know I don't even know I started doing this <laughs> I did the notes for this episode and then I forgot to uh, come up with something to review that was fine. I'll go ahead and review a movie that I saw this week that's a good thing to do because I really enjoyed it and I didn't think I was gonna enjoy it as much as I did actually let me give you two I'm gonna give you two movies that I have seen in the past two weeks because one I saw last week and than what I saw this week. When I'm in Conway, they've got a movie theater, the Frank 14, that their popcorn and the butter and everything is just perfect. I, I love the 
love their popcorn. And so I always try to go see a movie if I'm going to spend a couple of nights in Conway at least. So the last two weeks I've been there, the last two weeks I've seen a couple of movies. And I go on Tuesdays because the popcorn is like two and a half dollars for the medium. They're having, they have a special on Tuesday nights. So the first night, last week, I went to see Florence Foster Jenkins with Meryl Streep and Hugh Grant. It's about this lady back in the 19, I think it was the 1920s? I think it was 1920s. And um, she was this rich lady who decided she wanted to sing and have a concert singing opera, but she was awful. But she was rich and everybody loved her and told her what she wanted to hear, so she didn't realize she was awful. And it's a wonderful movie. It's got some great poignant, really life lessons to learn in that movie, some great lines. And then this past week, I went to see Sully with Tom Hanks, and it's the story of the uh, U.S. Airlines, I think it's U.S. Airlines, whichever airline company it was, flight that he, the pilot landed in in the Hudson River in New York City a few years ago. It's Sully's story, that airline captain, and I think it was based off a book that he and either his co-pilot or somebody else wrote. Anyway, Tom Hanks plays Sully, and he has to go through the investigation by the Airline Association, and they're thinking at first that he really uh, had made a mistake by landing in the Hudson, and he could have turned and landed at LaGuardia Airport, and it was all about what happened during that hearing and going back in flashbacks of what happened during the flight. It was a really good movie. I'm a big Tom Hanks fan anyway, but if you get an opportunity to see Sully, it really is a good character development movie. Uh, so is Florence Foster Jenkins. Uh, really good acting in both of those music uh, movies, good storylines as well. So I highly recommend them, and I'm going to allow that to be this week's positive review. Well, the ending of the show has not been recorded, so I'm going to go ahead and give it to you live, but I'm not going to whine about it. I'm just going to tell you how you can get in touch with me should you decide that you want to. Here's how you do it. You can call me on the voicemail line at 706-408-7456. That's 706-408-7456. Or you can get in touch with me via my email, and that is feedback at michaelblackston.com. Feedback at michaelblackston.com. You can get in touch with me that way. And one of the best things to do is to uh, go straight to the website, and that's roadnoisepodcast.com. And from there, you can get to iTunes. You can get, uh, you can share it on Twitter and on Facebook and on Pinterest. And uh, there's even a button there where you can get to all of the social media things and choose whichever one you want to. I, I shared a couple of these episodes on Reddit. I don't know if that really does anything or not. But if you want to try it, you certainly can. And the best way you can help me grow besides leaving reviews and ratings for me on iTunes and places like that is just tell somebody about us. Let somebody know that the Road Noise podcast is something you like listening to. You get to know Michael you know, and you get to ride along with him on his commutes and hear some of the wisdom or some of the idiocy, whichever way you look at it that comes out of his mouth. And I hope to get to know you, and I hope to get to know your friends a whole lot better. So thank you once again for sitting alongside me in the passenger seat with me, Michael Blackston, as we learn to live life one mile at a time.